Cowabunga dudes and dudettes, this is Anthony, aka Batbomb82, and today I'll be doing my 200th Mezco Toys 112 Collective action figure review, this time being of Doctor Doom. Now taking a look at the front, we can see a great image of Doctor Doom's mask. And if we turn the box around, multiple images and panels showcasing the figure in multiple posing positions with his different interchangeable parts and accessories. So with the box out of the way, let's go ahead and crack this figure open and let him breathe. Alright guys, now let's take a closer look at Doctor Doom. Now how cool is it that we literally just got the Fantastic Four? like what, a week, maybe two weeks ago, and now we're already getting Doctor Doom. I think that's incredible. I love the fact that they did that. Um, I guess the timing just worked out, and again, I am very appreciative of that. But Doctor Doom here looks awesome, man. This is one of my all-time favorite villains, and I think Mezco just did a fantastic job with him. I will say, <clears throat> much like the Fantastic Four set, I wish they just did a little bit mez more mezco fine with the soft goods and the design of the like fabric here. It's a little too simple for my personal taste when it comes to a mezco figure, but that doesn't mean it looks bad. It still looks very good, very nice quality material. The stitching looks great, almost like a faux like leather, but it's it's a really nice material. Uh, same thing with the cape, man. The material just feels really good. Uh, there is a really nice bendy wire running throughout that cape that works really good too. Uh, same thing with the hood. There is a bendy wire going through that. And all this material just, again, feels really, really nice. Uh, what I do like, the clasps here are just on magnets, so you can pull those off and then just take the entire cape off if you really want to do so like that. But again, I think the belt looks good. That nice old school, just classic Doctor Doom, big fat gold belt buckle looks really nice. I love the body parts of the armor here. Look really, really good. Again, very classic, but still very much a little bit more of that Mezco flair. You know, I wish there was a little more Mezco flair, but that's just me. That's just, I love that whole thing uh, with Mezco. The arms look really great too. The hands all look really nice. Very cool looking piece. Uh, the back of the figure looks really good as well. What I do also like too is just the weight of this guy because he does utilize some die cast parts. Uh, things like these uh, four, uh, the legs, the shins and things like that are metal. I believe the biceps are in the upper uh, forearms are metal. I believe even bits of the head are actually metal. Uh, so it's pretty, you, when you pick this guy up, you will feel he definitely has some weight to, to him. And again, it just really feels like good quality. Now moving on to accessories, we of course do get the Mezco circular base stand. Just simply says Dr. Doom uh, with a green base like that. And then we do get the clear articulated arm that comes with every figure. We of course get a ton of interchangeable hands and it is crazy to see all the cool things that it comes with, um, especially because, you know, Dr. Doom does use technology and magic and you're going to need all the different types of hands for all the things he does with, with his spells and weapons and things like that. So I love all the different things that you get there, including like different pouches and belts. I love all that stuff a lot. So again, he does come with a different belt here. You can just unlatch right there at these pouches. And then we do get another one. This one's going to have like a second strap on there. And this thing can come off um, when you're kind of like posing around and messing around with it. So, you know, just be careful. It's gonna happen. Um, but I just pop it on there and it goes on pretty easily. But he of course does get this gun holster that we can slide onto the belt like that. And then of course he does get his gun that looks like a little old school Optimus Prime, you know what I'm saying? Or excuse me, not Optimus Prime, Megatron, what the hell, why would I say Optimus Prime? It looks like the old school Megatron, you know what I mean? Uh, that old school gun, uh, was it like the Germans used or something, something like that, the P-40, whatever, I don't know my guns, I'm more of a sword guy, but that can go right into that holster like that. If I can get this to clasp on, and oh my god, I cannot see this with my big fat fingers constantly in the way. Uh, I complain about my fingers a lot, don't I? They're just big chunky snossages, man. It happens. Um, but still, I think that's a cool look. I think it's probably my preferred look when it comes to the belt. I do like the extra strap hanging down there. And again, you have another pouch option if you just want to add a pouch instead of the gun holster. But I definitely want to have that gun holster on there. Now, on to even more accessories. 
oh my god, the effect pieces. He comes with so many effect pieces, pieces which is fantastic. Um, I just love when Mezco just goes all out and gives us a ton of stuff. You know, I love their figures, but when it comes to the attention of detail of the accessories, just the amount of little things that we get with all these figures, I think that's where Mezco tends to shine very severely. So again, I'm going to try and show all these off as much as I can. It might be a little tricky. Uh, so we do get this one here with a really cool rune type of uh, design on it. I think it looks good. And we've seen this type of effect piece before with the old school Doctor Strange figure that came out years ago. It kind of just slides on over like a wrist or things like that. It looks like he's projecting that. I think that works out really cool too. We do get some thruster effect pieces like here for his boots that can go right into the peg holes at the bottom of his feet. Uh, so it can look like he's flying and things like that and those jumps that he did. You guys remember Marvel vs. Capcom? Doctor Doom was always one of my favorite characters in that game. Uh, and I love the thrusting effects that he had on, in that game where he could just jolt at you and just tear you up. I don't know. I'm just, I'd really love that a lot. But we get things like this, which I think is really cool. You get this effect right here. That's, that's a little warpy and I gotta, I gotta fix that. But that goes right on a little pointy finger that comes with a figure and it makes it seem, and you guys have probably seen this from the comic books, right? Where he shoots a little laser out, the, out of his fingertip. I think that is so dope, man. Very, very cool stuff. And the same thing with this effect here, this really nice blue effect. Again, I love how Mezco does their effect pieces. They do them so well. Uh, this one's gonna go on to like the fingertips of, of, of uh, like this one right here where the fingers are kind of straightened out like that. I think that looks really cool too. Again, because he uses so many different types of uh, effects and things like that. I just love the way it works out. You got these like giant electricity effects that come off of his arms. I think those are awesome. I love these right here where he has the electric uh, effects coming, the purple electric effects coming out of his fingertips, you know, to get his Emperor Palpatine on. I think that is super cool. I mean, it's all this stuff, man, that we get with this figure that just re really makes him feel like something special. One really cool accessory is the book that we get with this guy. Uh, I think Mezco just makes the best books in 112 scale. I'm not even joking. Uh, and this is why. First of all, it does open up, and I love the little ribbon here so you can, you know, save your place in the book. I think it's awesome. But again, these are like legit books with actual paper pages. And, and actual printing on each freaking page. How many companies do you know do that? You know what I mean? That is, again, like I just said, when it comes to the attention to detail to like the effects and accessories and all the things that you get, that is just where Mezco shines, man. Uh, we also do get this little effect piece right here. It's like a translucent effect piece that would slip onto his wrist and you would hold that in the book like that, like there, and you'd slip this over the wrist and it makes it look like he's kind of like, the book is kind of like floating in the air and things like that, but such a cool little accessory, man. Again, I just love, if you have all the different books that we've gotten from Mezco, you're getting a really cool looking library. Now turning the figure to the backside, you're gonna see these two plates uh, on the back of his shoulders here. These are gonna kind of just pry out and it could be a little tricky, uh, but that is so you can replace them with these like thrusters that'll come out of the back there because he does again he does use technology too and those will pop out like so and then you do get effect pieces uh for these to pop right in there like that again to get those crazy jumps and flying things that dr doom likes to do and again that's probably why he's one of my favorite villains uh it's just because he's a combination of technology and magic i think that's really cool now let's talk about the head sculpts because you do get a good amount of options with Dr. Doom here. First of all, you get the unmasked heads, which I think are really great. Uh, great looking sculpts. He does look mean and intense. Uh, and if you look at the actual metal parts around the he head, around like the face there, I, those feel like actual die casts because they are cold to touch. So I'm pretty sure those are metal. And then you get like a plastic insert for the faces and things like that. Uh, then you get the more scarred head, which I think is really cool. So I dig those quite a bit. You know, I wish it was a little more rougher and a little more, you know, rugged because Mezco can, can tend to be a little softer when it comes to the head sculpts. So especially the battle damage head, I kind of wish that was a little more, uh, I don't know, just a little darker and deeper and a little more, you know, gritty. You know what I'm saying? So, but it still looks really, really good. 
We also do get the different face plates for Doctor Doom. So you get your more old school face plate with all the rivets and things like that, and the more sharper cheeks. I think it looks really, really good. Uh, you get that same type of mask, the more old school mask. That's more uh, wide mouth, and like he's yelling and he's pissed, and he's you know attacking the Fantastic Four and things like that, or he's just yelling at Reeves or anything like that. So. Um, I know that face mask does tend to make the head look a little bigger, uh, and it kind of does, uh, but it's mostly because the jaw is dropping down, so it tends to elongate the, the whole shape of the head, but it does make sense. And then probably my favorite uh, head is going to be the more modern one, the more mezco one. It's a little more smoother. Um, I just prefer that style. I think that's very, very cool. And one thing I want to show you too, if you look at the inside of the masks, uh, you can see all this circuitry and detailing. That's stuff that they did not have to do, but they did. Um, and you get different circuitry for the more classic helmet, which is this one right here. This is the more modern one. And the more open mouth one has the same circuitry as the old school one because they're the exact same mask, really. But that's just really cool attention to detail, man. But again, I'm going to go with the more battle damage head because this is my preferred look with the old or the more modern mask. And you can kind of pop that on, and it'll kind of like form fit in place like that. And then you can go ahead and put the hood on. Again, since the hood is wired, you can go ahead and shape that cape or the hood, the hood to the head, however you like. And I think that is just such a cool look. And then the last accessory is probably the coolest one. We get the Cosmic Power Siphon Harness. I think this thing is so cool. Um, again, from the games to the comic books, this is such an iconic accessory that I think Mezco just did such a fantastic job with. Uh, I love the sculpt of it. Uh, I love the hosing coming around the back. All the little like buttons and switches down here. You got the little vents down there. Uh, this is a battery cover, so you can just pull this off and put the little button cell batteries that this thing does come with. That's really nice. I also love how the handles can move up and down. And you can kind of see the accordion shocks like that how those will move up and down to pose around and things like that. Uh, especially, this especially helps when you're getting the figure in hand and on the figure, or excuse me, helps you get the accessory on the figure, so that's really nice. Uh, we also do get this effect, uh, like, like, almost like a projecting piece that you could pop into the top right there. Actually, I think I put that backwards, uh, like that, right there. So that's really cool too. Uh, this does have a button you can just turn on right on the top there and you can see this thing all lit up. It looks very, very cool. Now getting this thing on can be fairly tricky and kind of a pain in the butt, honestly. But uh, what I've been doing, I've been taking the closed, or excuse me, the gripping hands first and putting them on the handles like that. Uh, this is just gonna make things a lot easier. So again, I really suggest putting the hands on, on the handles first. And then we're gonna take these hoses we're going to kind of just put them towards the back for now, uh, kind of slide them back there. And then we're going to go ahead and kind of fold the arms in and plug the hands into the pen pegs like that. Again, this is can be a pain in the butt, man. So you're going to have to play with it uh, and, and just finagle it. It's, it. It'll get there. Now, once you get the hands on uh, into place, you know what I mean? You're going to have to kind of take the cape and then kind of feed it between the tubes right here. So it's going to come through there. Uh, then these pieces are going to pop in in those shoulder plates. You know, again, you have to pop off the old shoulder plates and place them in the little pegs like that. And then you're going to want to like tuck the cape back like so. And you're going to have something like that, which again, I think looks really cool. We can go ahead and take uh, this piece back and put it in there like that. And then we go ahead and turn it back on like so. And that's just really freaking cool looking, dude. And since the, the cable's on a bendy wire, you can still pose it around, around like that. You know, turn off some lights and this thing just glows beautifully. It looks super cool, man. Um, again, I'm gonna tell you straight up, this thing is a pain in the butt to put on. You know, I don't even have it on perfectly the way I want. Um, but it still looks really cool once you do and, you know, put them on the display base with the, the arm. I think this is going to be one really cool looking figure on your shelf. Now, breaking down the articulation, the head and the neck are on ball pegs. So it rolls around fairly decently, does turn left and right, up and down a good amount, and then rock side to side. Arms can go full 360 like that, up and out 
about that far. And again, again, I love how you can see it has metal frame or armor underneath that. That looks really good. Rotation at the bicep. We got double jointed elbows, but since his arms and the metal parts are so bulky, he could do just a little bit past 90. Um, so that's okay. We got rotation at the wrist as well as a hinge at the wrist. We get a double ball peg in the midsection. That rolls around pretty nicely. Does turn left and right. Pivot side to side a little bit. Crunches back and forth a little bit. I wish that was a little bit better. Um, the hip joints can kick forward up that far. Back, not really. Splits out about that far. I think if you move the skirts up a bit, you can go about that far. Rotation the upper thigh. Double jointed knees again. Um, I don't know if it's just the bulkiness of the uh, sculpt, but it can barely pen past 90 like that. So again, I wish that was a little bit better. And the angles can rotate. Those are on. Looks to be uh, some type of ball peg with a pin. Rolls around, side to side, up and down, and a fairly decent ankle rocker. So, overall, I think this is such a cool figure, man. I, you know, I understand not everybody's going to like everything Mezco does, and I get it. Um, I, you know what? I don't like everything they do either, man. Um, but if I say anything positive, I'm a Mezco shill, and quite frankly, I don't even care at this point. I'm just going to embrace it. I love this figure. He's so badass, and I'm just really glad to have him in my collection, and he is definitely a must-get. So for a quick size comparison, here he is standing next to a Marvel Legends Deadpool and Mafex Batman figure. Also for comparison, here he is standing next to a couple Mezco Fantastic Four figures, being Mr. Fantastic himself and The Thing. And for a couple baddies comparison, here he is standing next to the Mezco 112 Collective Magneto and Thanos. And just for fun, here he is with Little Lego Bat Bomb. So there it is guys, my review of the Mezco Doctor Doom. And man, this has been one of my most anticipated Mezcos as I absolutely love Doctor Doom. And I don't think Mezco disappointed. Now, he's not perfect. Uh, again, I do understand that the head with the open mouth makes the head look a little bit big, but it's not terrible, especially if you get him posed in the right way. I absolutely do love that harness thing, even though it is a complete pain in the ass to get assembled. But once you have it on there, it looks incredible with the LEDs. And oh my god, all the different hands and the effect pieces, those are so impressive. From the thrusters to the magic effects to getting a real freaking book for this guy. I mean, I love this kind of stuff. Like I always says, the accessories and the detail of the soft goods and things like that is where Mezco really excels. Yes, this is a pricey figure going for around $160 plus depending on where you get it. Is he worth it? That's gonna be really up to you. All I can say is I love this piece. He's definitely one of my favorites on the Mezco shelf. And this might be the last Doctor Doom I ever need. Who knows what the next 20 years will hold. But he's awesome, man. He's a badass piece. And I think he will look great in any of your Mezco collections. So be excellent to each other. And stay nerdy, my friends. Peace.